This is an official Football League video, one in a series that features Race for the Championship. 60 minutes of non-stop action, captured in the only official video of the pursuit of the Football League trophy. The official and exclusive Football League video of your club's season in Division 1 relives all the games, home and away, all the goals for and against, a collectible must for every supporter. Revel in the First Division's most breathtaking goals in goals galore. And the greatest goalkeepers in action in saves galore. A brilliant one-two from the Football League. Welcome to the official Football League video of Coventry City's season 1990-1991. It's been a season of hope, then one of change, as the Sky Blues struggled on. You'll see all the goals from all the games as Coventry started their 24th consecutive season in Division 1. After the signings of Kevin Drinkle and Kevin Gallagher last season, it looked likely that a top six finish was possible. But fading away in the final ten games, City only finished 12. The first team squad showed no major changes. Goalkeeper Steve Grizovic was starting his sixth season with the club. Defensively, Brian Burrows and Trevor Peake had been key figures in the previous campaign and they provided the experience along with Brian Kilkline. Two players from the FA Cup winning side were still available in midfield, Mickey Ginn and the injury-prone Lloyd McGrath, with further reinforcements needed. And up front last season's signings, the two Kevins, Drinkle and Gallagher, joined by the experienced David Speedy, Cyril Regis and the youthful talent of Steve Livingston. John Sillett starting his fourth season as sole manager and he'd recently signed a contract for three years, with his planned retirement coming at the end of the 92-93 season. And so to the first league game of the season, away at Old Trafford. It was new boy Dennis Irwin who helped break the deadlock on the hour when he swung over a corner and defender Steve Bruce delivered a bullet header to put Alex Ferguson's team in front. Coventry didn't really threaten the home goal and the three points never looked in doubt. Just to make sure though, Neil Webb demonstrated his ability to get forward and score when he dived in to get on the end of another cross from the effective Irwin. Not the easiest start to a season, but before the first home game, the Sky Blues open a new disabled supporters stand and new training facilities, the Sky Blue Lodge. The New England manager, Graham Taylor, was on hand for the opening and for Everton's visit to Highfield Road. Everton's Neville Southall was heavily fined for prematurely leaving a half-time team talk on Saturday. Southall was soon in difficulties again at Coventry. Confusion here with his left back, Andy Hinchcliffe. David Speedy, the beneficiary. Southall has been seeking a transfer, but his present dissatisfaction is through disappointment with his own form. Everton fell two behind after 20 minutes. David Smith twisting and turning and teasing, and Kevin Gallagher scoring with a sweet volley. Certainly no blame attached to Southall this time.
The Scottish international Pat Nevin is one Everton player who has started the new season in fine fettle. This a splendid individual effort to add to his goal against Leeds in their opening match. But Everton's road to recovery was cut off 19 minutes from time. 3-1 to Coventry with Tony Dobson drilling his shot wide of Southall. Coventry's first win, Everton played two, lost two. in the first half but the fireworks began early in the second period when Kevin Gallagher was brought down by Brian Laws with the goal in sight Brian Kilcline converting the first of four penalties awarded in the match two minutes later an innocuous handball by Paul Edwards led to one for Forrest And up stepped Nigel Jemson to convert his second spot kick in three games. Another innocent looking handball by Terry Wilson this one and another penalty. This time Kilcline failed to convert the opportunity. Forrest took the lead when Jemson curled an absolute beauty past Steve Grizovich's outstretched fingers. Two one to Forrest and Jemson's third of the season. The battle between David Speedy and Des Walker had raged all afternoon. The Scottish striker had the last word when the referee ruled that Walker had handled his shot. The England defender protested vehemently and may well have had a point. With the penalty spot in danger of disappearing through overuse, Brian Borrows buried the kick and the spoils were shared. Now Coventry have never won at Villa Park and they were hoping the addition of Uruguayan international Jose Perdomo might help strengthen their cause. But after 39 minutes Coventry found themselves in familiar territory. There's an error from Brian Kilcline and Tony Cascarino takes full advantage. David Platt in the clear and Platt brought down by Lloyd McGrath a clear penalty and England's World Cup sharpshooter picked himself up and made no mistake from the spot but Coventry refused to bow to pressure from the home side and deserved to get back on terms when fullback Brian Borrows equalised with an effort that even Josimar of Brazil might have been proud of Great strike, Nigel Spink doesn't let many in from that sort of distance. Villa though, looking for their first win of the season, pressed forward and were rewarded eight minutes from time. The substitute Dwight York and the ball falls kindly for Tony Cascarino. The Irishman blasts it home, Joseph Bengloss has his first success in English football. That defeat away to Villa was followed by a goalless home draw with Wimbledon, so only five points from five games and the Sky Blues struggling in the bottom half of the table. Just 8,000 turned up at Kenilworth Road to see if Luton had recovered from that 6-1 pasting last week and they saw an early goal. Kingsley Black and Ian Dowie's delicate deflection took it past to Grizovic in the Coventry goal. Three points and mid-table respectability for Luton, who usually struggle in the first division basement. A good win for Coventry with Steve Livingston opening the scoring against Queen's Park Rangers in the very first minute. Across from the former Liverpool man Kevin MacDonald and 21-year-old Livingston heads home. Donald started the move for the second goal. Livingston again, and now Kevin Gallagher. And finally, Mickey Jin, who puts Coventry two up.
Second half now, and Steve Livingston scores again. This time, on the break, his second of the day, and Coventry's third. Who needs David Speedy, the Coventry forward, left out, apparently for disciplinary reasons. QPR got one back just before the end. Les Ferdinand claiming a consolation goal for Rangers. But no goals from Roy Wegerly this weekend and no points for Rangers. City are proving a tough nut to crack under Howard Kendall. They had much the better of a slightly disappointing first half, but they didn't take the lead until early in the second. There's some good work on the far side by the former England man Peter Reid. And the ball dropped nicely for Alan Harper to get his first goal for the club. City thoroughly deserved the win, but they didn't wrap up the points until Niall Quinn delicately swerved a right foot shot past Steve Grizovic with just five minutes left. Helped by the substitute Clive Allen. In different form in the opening weeks and the Sky Blues still in the lower reaches of the division. The Rumbelows League Cup had given Coventry a two-leg tie against Bolton. At home, Steve Livingston was given his first full game of the season and scored twice in a 4-2 victory. In the away leg, an early goal from Cyril Regis effectively ended the tie. Livingston's four goals in two games won him the Young Eagle of the Month award for the Midlands in September. And he was again in the team for the home match against Southampton. Southampton striker Matthew Letizier is said to be finding life much harder this season. Letizier feels defenders may have got wise to him, but he is back to his best at Coventry. A low cross spins in off the luckless Peter Billing. The Saints get an early lead. Coventry draw level just before half-time though. Cyril Regis brought down by Neil Ruddock. That's an obvious penalty. Brian Borrows against Tim Flowers. And Borrows buries the kick. The Sky Blues are level. In the second half, Letizier really stamped his authority on the game. Delightful back heel leads to a free kick. Grizovic tries to organise his wall. And the free kick with the veteran case there. Watch this curler from Letizier. Super goal, Saints' first away win, and Letizier already an under-21 international. Full honours can't be that far away for this exciting player. Spare a thought, though, for Dave Bassett. Ten matches back in the first division for his Sheffield United side, and still no win. The worst run of his managerial career. When he lucks down, it can be a cruel game. A poor back pass here by Ian Bryson late in the second half. Cyril Regis first to react. Simon Tracy brings him down. It's a penalty. More practice for Brian Borrows. The Blades' first division campaign distinctly blunted. Ten games played, only three wins and two draws. The Sky Blues still in the lower half of the table. The Rumbelows League Cup was proving to be a success, though. In the third round, a 3-0 win over Hull City, another goal from Steve Livingston. It set up a home tie with Nottingham Forest, but there were to be many changes in the month before that fixture was to take place. Back in the league, unbeaten Arsenal were the next visitors to Highfield Road. Arsenal travelled to Highfield Road on the back of an impressive cup win at Manchester City, but they left it very late. There were only seven minutes to go when Anders Limpar crunched up a great goal out of nothing. 
a thunderous left foot shot and left Steve Grizovic crutching at thin air. Well, Limpar's never been out of the headlines this season, and this magnificent goal, his seventh, confirms his newsworthy status. Even at a million pounds, he's turning out to be a real bargain, and with three minutes to go, there's good work for the Gunners from Nigel Winterburn, and Limpar again, this time with his right foot, deflection off the unfortunate Peter Billing, of Grizovic beaten again. Not the best of matches this one at Roker in difficult conditions. But Grizovic distinguished himself in the Coventry goal with a flying save from Davenport. And the Sunderland keeper, Tim Carter, proved he could do just as well. With a good block from Brian Borrows. The keepers won the day, the match finished goalless. After the poor start to the season, Terry Butcher joined the club as player-manager, replacing John Sillett, who'd done so much for Coventry City. Butcher's £400,000 move threw him into the hot seat for the game against unbeaten league leaders Liverpool. Jim turned away from McMahon, but then gave it away to Burrows. Now Whelan. Fine ball, Nickel. On to Houghton. Well, he was lucky to get it back, actually. And he finds Rush in the penalty area. Good turn. Back it comes from Houghton. Nichols shot. Splendid save. Danger lurks in every corner of the field when you're playing Liverpool. And Steve Nichol hit that one with such ferocity that any forward on view would have been proud to put his name to the shot. But what a splendid save it was by Agrisovic. a little bit and <laughs> he is going to come into contact with flying boots but a free kick against Liverpool Burrows takes it looks for Regis far post butchers up there as well and Grobelar and his defenders had no idea what was happening then total confusion in the Liverpool penalty area caused I think by Bruce Grobelar and Gallagher nearly profited it from that indecision Twenty-five minutes gone, or just coming up to it anyway, and Coventry have a corner. Jin will take it. Butchers on the near post. Regis on the back post. It wasn't really picked up by the Liverpool defenders. I think they're all watching Butcher on the near post and the big centre-half billing in the middle, and Regis sneaked in between them all. be underneath it, Speedy, Jin did well, here's Regis, Gallagher, Regis takes over or intended to, but Houghton just stepped in, Butcher gets it back to the edge of the Liverpool box, McGrath shot, oh he really clipped that one deliberately along the ground, was looking for the corner of the net and very nearly found it, a sweetly struck shot, in possession for Liverpool. McMahon and Nickel, Wheeler, Rush. Oh, he's played it in behind everybody, and that was a terrible miss. Gary Ablett could have given Liverpool the lead in the first minute of the second half. Astonishing incident. He just arrived from nowhere. Big deep kick by Grobelar, Billing underneath it, Burrows for Coventry has made a mistake, Burrows with the interception. Houghton. Well, Grisovic and Butcher somehow got it clear, but Beardsley was on hand to sweep the ball into the net and give Liverpool the lead. 17 minutes to go, Beardsley got the initial 
just a little flick on to Houghton here. And Krisovic and Butcher perhaps got in each other's way and Beardsley latched onto the rebound. The real goal poacher's goal by Peter Beardsley, his 11th of the season, he scored in each of his last three games now and he whipped that one into the Coventry net. Coventry nil, Liverpool won and for all the opportunities Coventry have had in this game they found like so many teams before them that you don't get more than one chance usually against Liverpool and you've got to take them and Liverpool with their tails up now as Houghton finds Rush no sting in the shot but Peter Beardsley fresh from his exploits for England in Dublin in the week with his 11th goal of the season, has given Liverpool the edge. Coventry have got to really move things on quickly now. They know how good Liverpool are and holding on to a lead in the dying minutes of a game. If Coventry is to rescue anything from this, they've got to strike as soon as they can here. Burrows turning it forward. Hussain intercepts. Oh, one back well by Gallagher! Not a bad effort. Kevin Gallagher was really alive to the danger then as he moved in to intercept from Gillespie and looked for the top of the net. Didn't quite find it, but a good effort by the man who hit the post in the opening minute of this game. Came off peak to Beardsley. Filling did well. Held his ground splendidly. In forward, Gallagher's layoff, another good one. Smith, first time he's had an opportunity to try and weave a bit of magic in the middle. And he finds Jim. And uh, Burroughs has challenged him and given away the free kick. this for Coventry to send everyone forward virtually Peak will take the kick and lofts it in high towards Regis and it breaks in the middle of the penalty area to Gallagher again and he just couldn't dig it out to get in a telling shot but suddenly Liverpool counter-attack themselves with Rush and Beardsley straight against Edwards but that would have been a classic Liverpool goal because at one moment they almost conceded a goal themselves and then they almost scored one at the other end Regis with a great downward header look Gallagher just couldn't find the room to clip it towards goal Terry Butcher's first week in management hasn't been too kind defeat against Liverpool and now the threat of a football league inquiry into the role his agent played in his transfer from Scottish champions Rangers and he could have done without a visit from Leeds United. Lee Chapman and Gordon Strachan have struck a formidable partnership for the Yorkshire club. Three goals each in the last three games. And it was Chapman who again showed his effectiveness in front of goal. 23 minutes gone. More gloom for Coventry. But Butcher's boys came out for the second half full of the fighting spirit that characterised their manager's better days on the field. Kevin Gallagher, who like Butcher has found moving from Scotland far from easy, provides the equaliser. His first league goal of the season, a share of the points for Coventry. So Terry Butcher's first point in charge of the Sky Blues, it was well earned against high-flying Leeds. A break from the league came in the midweek visit to Highfield Road by Nottingham Forest in the Rumbelows League Cup. And what a game it was. Another fierce kick from Agrizovic, beating everybody apart from Walker, who covered well. But his header drops to Smith, and Edwards supporting him down the left. Walker met the cross, and it was difficult then for Forrest. And the combination of Walker, Laws and Chettel finally forced the ball behind for Coventry's first corner kick. Just out of the picture at the moment, Billing, the big centre-half, has come forward. There he is, number five, Regis. Also a possible target here. It goes into the near post, in fact. Oh, it's off the line, it's in! Gallagher hits the rebound home, and Coventry City are in front! 
delight for Highfield Road. 15 minutes gone, and Kevin Gallagher was so sharp in the penalty area then, when it looked as though Coventry had missed their chance to score. Lovely flick on from Livingston. The downward header from Speedy was cleared off the line, but Gallagher was quicker than anyone onto the rebound. Boris will want to know why Speedy was left unmarked in the first place. A vital goal for Kevin Gallagher. His third in the competition this season, his fifth in all, and Coventry City lead the holders Nottingham Forest by one goal to nil. And Regis with another good header forward for Livingston. Pierce did well though. That was really classy defending by the England number three. Billings clearance. Speedy who's really fired up to play well here today. Involved again. Now Regis in space in the middle. Good ball too, and Gallagher's got three again. Oh, what a goal! Two in the space of a minute for Kevin Gallagher. And they can't believe it here at Coventry. But Mark Crossley in the Nottingham Forest goal must take the lion's share of the blame for this. The ball was played out to Gallagher, and I'm sure that Crossley was expecting a centre to the far post, because he seemed to get himself completely in the wrong position. Maybe that's what was intended. Whatever, it was a bad goalkeeping error. And here's Gallagher again. All of a sudden, he's on a hat-trick, incredibly. Well, the 21-year-old who's played every game this season since displacing Steve Sutton will be very disappointed with that goal. And suddenly, the holders defending a 22-match unbeaten run in this competition find themselves two goals behind. And only 16 minutes gone. What a start for Coventry City. And then new player manager Terry Butcher, who's not even on the pitch. Another good kick from Ibrisovic. Chettle meets it this time. Laws onto it for Nottingham Forest. Parker alongside him. Looking for Crosby down the right. And it was a good ball. Edwards quickly over to cover again. Crosby twisting and turning at the fullback. And eventually getting a good cross in. And it beats everybody but Keane. And Ibrisovic saves it at the second attempt as Hodge came sliding in. Did well then, big Steve Ibrisovic. Young Roy Keane, who's only scored one goal for Nottingham Forest, and it was in this competition against Burnley, very close to pulling Forest back into the picture then. A difficult shot sliding along the wet top. And Coventry are playing some good football here, marking tight, tackling ferociously, and going forward with some style as Borrows proves. Overdid it a little bit, but Speedy makes sure Coventry keep possession. his long ball onto the head of Livingston and he nearly set Gallagher free again and it comes back to Gallagher as the two defenders got in each other's way and Livingston has made it free it's a demolition job this 17 minutes to half time and astonishingly Coventry City are 3-0 in front and Nottingham Forest are in total disarray Steve Livingston scores for the third time in the competition this season and his sixth goal in all. And the man who made a name for himself with four goals in last season's competition against Sunderland has made a very, very good platform now for Coventry City to go on to the quarterfinals. Smith, Edwards... The interception by Parker. Oh, it was a bit awkward in possession and he was dispossessed by Smith. And a lot of Coventry players forward again here. He looked for Regis on the far post. And a spectacular clearance by Pierce. And I think that showed the kind of pressure Forrester under here. The Pierce 
didn't feel he was able to take any risk at all then Smith's whip done some really dangerous crosses from the left and this was another one goes into Regis on the near post dealt with awkwardly again Dillon coming in there oh and it's turned forward by Gallagher he's got a hat trick What a first half this has been, and Crossley has been beaten four times. Billings, little header forward, creating the danger, and that spectacular shot by Gallagher. This is Keane. Jensen. Turned on by Clough, a lovely ball. Parker, Crosby. They're shell shocked here, Nottingham Forest. They need a goal now from Clough, and they've got one. Dear, dear, will there be any end to the scoring in the first half? There's still nine minutes to go to half time. 4 1. Well, if that goal had come a little bit earlier, Nottingham Forest might have felt that they were in with a the shout. They still will feel that. Good effort by Clough into the corner, beating Agrisovic. Hit very deliberately. His fourth goal of the season and his third in the last four games. Parker. Speedy gets it away to Regis. And given away again sloppily by Nottingham Forest, but then Coventry commit the same sin. Here goes Pierce. Hodge. Hodge had nowhere to go. Good covering by Coventry. Jemson gets it back to him again and a good ball for Clough. Unbelievable, it's another goal. Clough second, Nottingham Forest second, the sixth of the half, with three minutes still to play in the end of, to the end of all. It's now Coventry four, Nottingham Forest two. What a beautiful finish that was by Nigel Clough. Absolute quality here. He saw the gap and he hit the ball sweetly, virtually along the ground, into the corner of the net. Grisovic beaten. Lovely build-up between Jensen and Hodge. Clough got himself into space and finished magnificently. Well, only a few minutes ago it looked as though Nottingham Forest were dead and buried. But not now. Two superb strikes by Nigel Clough have given them hope albeit a glimmer what a half six goals and a few other near misses great stuff here at Highfield Road I'm not sure he's really enjoyed it though Forest have got their tails up suddenly. Keen. Pierce with the cross. Could have gone anywhere and still could. Now the linesman has flagged and he's given a goal. Crosby has bundled it over the line. Well, somebody got a final touch anyway. And the linesman on the far side flagged goal. And Nottingham Forest have pulled it back to 4-3. Unbelievable! Two minutes to half time, and the incredible has happened here. Agrisovic missing it, and Crosby couldn't quite get the touch, or did he? It was either him or Clough. It matters not to Nottingham Forest. Borrows and Smith, the two Coventry City players who might fancy a shot on the target here. Gin is over the ball as well. It's Borrows who hits it. That was close enough to give Nottingham Forest a few heartaches again. At one stage this season, Brian Borrows was leading scorer here at Highfield Road. He's got four goals, and that was a fine effort.
gets it cleared. Speedy onto it. Burrows under pressure from Keane. And the Irishman's got away with the ball. Morris pouring players forward in support. He went a bit too far. Now the referee gets in the act. It's all happening tonight. Punch. Good ball. Parker into space and he's lost his marker well. And hit it. Oh, it's gone in. Unbelievably, Nottingham Forest, who were four behind with 12 minutes of the first half remaining, are now level. Eight minutes into the second half, Coventry pay the price for indecisive defensive work. And a fine shot by Parker makes it. 4-4. Steve Grisovic, I'm sure, will be unhappy about that one sneaking in on the near post. Dylan didn't really want the ball, I think, from that throw. And Burrow certainly didn't want it there. Forrester really hunting down Coventry players when they're in possession. Here's Burrows. That's a lovely little ball for Jim. He's got Regis in the middle. Gallagher on the right. It comes back. Oh! <laughs> it's a spectacular clearance in the end. From Laws. His heart must have been in his mouth though, and the ball looped goalwards. Laws knew Regis was behind him and he had to get the contact. Corner. Over Regis's head. He played it in towards the far post. Regis again. Has it gone in? Yes, it's forced in. Livingston finally forcing the ball in and Coventry City are back in front the scramble in the goal mouth Regis caused the danger with the shot forward as it rebounded out again it was Livingston who reacted quickest with a header his second goal of the game Regis caused the trouble with that shot Wall swished it clear, but Livingston forced it in. 47 and a half minutes on my watch. The referee has looked at his. And that's it. An amazing night at Highfield Road has ended with Brian Clough's grip on the League Cup finally shaken off. Nine goals. Livingston got what proved to be the winner. His second goal of the game. Two players got hat-tricks. Kevin Gallagher for Coventry and Nigel Clough for Nottingham Forest. And Terry Butcher has earned a famous victory in only his third game in charge as player-manager. He sat it out tonight, but my goodness, he inspired his side to a quite incredible win. The final score at Highfield Road. Coventry City 5, Nottingham Forest 4. And the winners of this competition for the last two seasons are out. Coventry's reward, a home tie with Sheffield Wednesday in the next round. Off the field, Mick Mills, Butcher's old teammate at Ipswich, had joined the Sky Blues as assistant manager. The new backroom team faced a difficult away fixture at Crystal Palace. Coventry player manager Terry Butcher selected himself for this one against Palace, but Butcher can do nothing about this Eddie McGoldrick free kick and a fine Mark Bright header, his eighth of the season. Butcher's job, though, not made any easier by David Speedy. His back chat earns him a red card in the last ten minutes. Butcher substituted himself, but Coventry still suspect at the back. Flick from Ian Wright. Coventry all at sea. Andy Gray accepts the gift. Gray just back from injury. Just before the final whistle, Coventry manager reply. It's the first goal of the season from Cyril Regis with two minutes to go. Too late for an equaliser. Palace finished with all three points. Just one defeat all season. Howard Kendall's return to Everton was supposed to herald the Merseysiders' revival. And Stuart McCall, the Scottish midfield player, is doing his best to make it happen. A spectacular volley, enough to earn Everton their first win with Howard Kendall back in charge. This really is an outstanding strike at goal.
Well, the Coventry City player manager Terry Butcher could do with a similar result. His side came very close to forcing a draw. David Speedy's effort and hooked away from the jaws of his own goal by Martin Keown. When you're down, though, the luck deserts you. 1-11. Well, Brian Robson played all 90 minutes in the England B match against Algeria. He began on the bench against Coventry. In contrast, Neil Webb failed to finish the Algeria game. Webb, only the 12th player ever to be sent off in an England shirt. He was back on the pitch, though, to face the Sky Blues. And Webb played his part in putting United ahead with a lovely through ball for Mark Hughes with only five minutes gone and a smart piece of finishing from the Welsh international. Coventry haven't won a league match under new manager Terry Butcher, their last win against Sheffield United seven games ago, and look to be heading for another defeat until Drinkle and Gin open the way for Kevin Gallagher late in the first half. Well, Coventry are living rather dangerously at the moment. They've only won three league matches all season. It's three months since they scored twice in the first division but they manage a sustained spell of pressure just short of the hour and there's a fine piece of work by David Smith such a good player down the left flank for the Sky Blues his cross is deflected and Cyril Regis in the right place at the right time but Brian Robson, Captain Marvel on his way to the rescue he joins the fray 20 minutes from time and puts his ball winning skills to immediate use there's Robson in there and the end product of this move is an equaliser for United. Again, Neil Webb very much involved. And Danny Wallace, who's having such a good season, touches it home. 2-2 at Highfield Road. Just three points from the last seven games and Coventry in relegation trouble. 18th in the table. And the Zenith Data Systems Cup provided no better cheer. A visit to Derby resulted in a 1-0 defeat with Peter Shilton's deputy, Martin Taylor, pulling off a string of sensational saves before Nigel Callaghan struck the winner. Next in the league, a visit to Chelsea. Terry Butcher's now been in charge at Coventry for five league games. He's still seeking his first win. But after 57 minutes, Coventry go in front. The former Chelsea man David Speedy with an overhead kick. And Kevin Gallagher successful with the same technique. His ninth of the season in league and cup. Chelsea probably not at their best. A good long clearance from Dave Besant. Flicked on by Dixon and turned back by Wise for Andy Townsend. Townsend back after swallowing his tongue in the Zenith Data competition 10 days ago. He's having a superb season in the Chelsea midfield and Townsend has clearly made a complete recovery. Chelsea have scored 14 goals in the last four league games and three minutes later they get their second of the afternoon. Graham Stewart, number 14, picks out Wise. Chelsea still unbeaten at Stamford Bridge. Coventry faltering under new manager Terry Butcher, but the Sky Blues always enjoy playing Spurs, who could forget their FA Cup final triumph three years ago. And sure enough, they regained winning ways. Kevin Gallagher with the first, his tenth goal of the season. He's justifying that record £900,000 transfer fee. Tottenham, according to manager Terry Venables, fell apart after that. Eric Torsvet unable to claim the ball on the edge of the area. Mickey Ginn making absolutely sure of the points for Coventry. Their first win under Terry Butcher and another body blow to Tottenham's title hopes. Coventry's first win under their new manager Terry Butcher seems to have given the players a new lease of life. It was certainly too perky for Norwich at Highfield Road. David Speedy earned the penalty that gave Coventry the lead, though the Norwich defenders were clearly unhappy with the decision. Brian Burrows wasn't. He took the kick, and Coventry were 1-0 ahead. After that, it was all downhill for Norwich. The goalkeeper, Brian Gunn, committing the kind of mistake that gives his fellow Scots a bad name. But David Speedy could hardly believe his luck as the ball trickled in at the near post. They'll take anything they can get at the baseball ground now, including this unlikely goal, the shot from Mick Harford, the present from Steve Agrizovic. 
But Derby's relief short-lived. Ten minutes before half-time, a fine move. And David Smith here gets a cross in, a deflection coming up. And who's there at the far post but Cyril Regis. A point apiece. With seven points over the Christmas and New Year games, the Sky Blues jumped two places up the table to 16th and signs of a recovery apparent. In the FA Cup, Wigan Athletic equalised in injury time Mickey Jin's second half goal. In the replay, Jin scored again, but it was the goalkeeping of Agrizovic that saw Coventry through. Back to the league and memories of that great Rumbelows Cup tie. These teams have shared 13 goals in their last two games, so a high-scoring contest was expected. It was goalless at half-time, but Cyril Regis' poor back pass puts in a quick-thinking Nigel Clough. Clough brought down by Steve Grizovic, who's perhaps lucky, given the present climate, not to find himself ruled guilty of a professional foul and on his way to the dressing room. Still, Forrest gained a penalty. Clough takes it himself, but Coventry's delight soon turns to anger as the referee indicates the kick must be retaken, apparently because a defender strays into the area before the ball had been struck. Clough gives way to Pierce for the second attempt, memories of the World Cup. The shame of missing the penalty apparently acts as a spur. Pierce more than makes amends in the 63rd minute, a typically determined effort. And 15 minutes after that, Pierce redeems himself even further allowing fellow culprit Nigel Clough an opportunity to atone for his sins. An entertaining afternoon at the city ground, rounded off close to the final whistle with a fine goal from Irishman Roy Keane. Forrest maintaining the form that saw them chance Norwich 6-2 last time out. Coventry haven't lost at home since Terry Butcher's first game in charge against Liverpool. But it was Aston Villa's England international David Platt who broke the deadlock at Highfield Road. He lobs home over the advancing Steve Grizovic for his 16th of the season. The Coventry team convinced he'd fouled fullback David Burrows in the process, and manager Terry Butcher booked for protesting too much. But the Sky Blues were looking somewhat happier minutes later when their informed midfield pocket battleship Mickey Jin put them on level terms. It was a scrambled effort, but they all count. It was Jin's third in a week. But the accusing fingers at Cyril Regis. Was he offside? Minutes from the end, Burrows had the last laugh on struggling Villa when he whipped over the cross for David Speedy to give commentary the three points with a well-directed header past Nigel Spink. Three more points and slowly the Sky Blues are climbing up a congested lower half of the table. The preceding week, two players who had joined the clubs as apprentices were sold to Blackburn Rovers. Steve Livingston left for £400,000 and the utility player Tony Dobson, a regular last season, went for 200000 This made the cash available to buy Ray Woods, who'd impressed the city management in his displays for Wigan against the Sky Blues in the FA Cup. He would have to wait for his debut. The Rumbelows League Cup was next, with a quarter-final at Highfield Road against Sheffield Wednesday. Eight minutes gone, still Coventry City nil, Sheffield Wednesday nil in this Rumbelows quarter-final tie. First header, and McCall went in bravely with Peak. And the Coventry captain in the end, bringing down the former Ipswich man. And that's going to be a dangerous position for Coventry to defend the free kick. Trevor Peak tripping McCall when the Sheffield Wednesday man had initially gone in bravely with his head, where many would have feared putting their boot, I think. Pearson and Shirt left the two centre backs of both forward for the kick. Played into the far post and cut back neatly as well on the turn, and it's got in! And Pearson, who gets so many vital goals for Sheffield Wednesday, has got another. The captain capitalising on Coventry City's hesitation on the far post. Pete couldn't reach the ball. It was a lovely turn by Pearson. That's his eighth goal of the season and his fourth in this competition. Lovely turn and shot. In the tenth minute of the game, the second division team take the lead. Nigel Pearson, the scorer. This is McDonald again. 
Jin. And the little man finding Regis, and Regis has lost Pearson. Can he finish? Oh, it was a good save by Chris Turner, and Cyril Regis did so well. Vintage Regis. He turned and lost Nigel Pearson in one movement and hit a powerful shot which brought the best out of Turner in the Wednesday goal. Smith. Oh, a nice little layoff by Drinkle to Smith. Still Smith. Needed help. Drinkle, it didn't quite reach him. It has reached Regis. Drinkle nearly got there again. Oh! The frustration of it all has little gin in the end. Knocked the ball wide. Drinkle, Regis, and then Gin were all involved in a move that could well have brought a Coventry City equaliser. And Gin snapped it absolutely inches wide. And shirt lifts header. Smith onto it for Coventry. And now McGrath. Smith. Swung in towards Regis, far into the penalty area, and it comes back to Cyril Regis, still Regis! Did it go in? The crowd are claiming it did, Regis is claiming it did. Importantly, the referee says it didn't, and the linesman was well placed to judge. Regis did so well, though. Went through three tackles. No, it didn't cross the line, the referee was right. Pearson cleared it before the whole of the ball had gone over the line. Drinkle on to Speedy, Speedy beaten in the challenge, and suddenly it's Palmer breaking clear for Sheffield Wednesday, and Carlton Palmer going all the way! Oh, dear, dear. That game was to be David Speedy's last for the club. He'd had transfer talks with Aston Villa, but then signed for Liverpool for £675,000. But out of two cups and the following week saw the FA Cup campaign come to an end after holding Southampton to a 1-1 draw at Highfield Road. Coventry lost 2-0 at the Dell. Just the league to concentrate on now, starting with an away game at Plough Lane. The first division's lowest crowd of the season, 4,061, must have left Plough Lane wondering why they bothered. Business Coventry without manager Terry Butcher and David Speedy barely managed a whimper. Terry Gibson put the match out of its misery. Paul McGee has been one of the South London club's revelations this season, but even he seemed affected by the malaise. Coventry goalkeeper Steve Sutton makes a terrible hash as he races to meet the ball. McGee screws the chance wide. 1-0 to Wimbledon, a win they just about deserve. Bad weather caused the cancellation of much of the league programme during February. Coventry finally got to play after a three-week gap, but could only get one point at home to Sunderland. That result left Coventry in 16th position, severe relegation anxieties now at the club. But Kevin Gallagher's return to the attack after missing two months with a knee injury and a subsequent operation sparked the team against Crystal Palace along with the debut of Ray Woods. Crystal Palace defence was said to be missing Andy Thorne when conceding four goals to Arsenal last week. Despite his return for this game, Palace still looks shaky at the back as Trevor Peake gives Coventry the lead in the 39th minute. Brian Kilcline's magnificent free kick put Coventry two up just after half-time. Kilcline only in the side because player-manager Terry Butcher was injured. And the big central defender strikes again in the 67th minute, heading in Woods' corner. It's the first time Coventry have got three goals this year. Four minutes from time, Palace do get a consolation goal. John Salako on the wing finds Thorne. And then it's Andy Gray who hustles his way to the byline before allowing Ian Wright to nod in his 15th goal of the season. It's not enough to prevent Palace's third loss in five games. At Elland Road, Leeds United were hoping to avoid their third successive defeat of the season, which would have been their worst run under Howard Wilkinson's management. And it was one of Wilkinson's team changes that paid dividends on the half hour. Bobby Davison playing his first full game of the season, putting Leeds in front. 
They came close to increasing their lead soon afterwards. Terry Butcher wouldn't have been too pleased as Coventry gave the ball away, but Lee Chapman unable to punish the mistake and Coventry getting away with it this time. But in the dying minutes, Leeds made sure of the three points against Butcher's side. Gordon Strachan setting up a third goal of the season for Chris White. Leeds 2, Coventry 0. In midweek, Coventry sought to ease their relegation worries at Highfield Road, but visitors Luton had the same idea. John Dreyer's low drive is turned in by centre-half Graham Roger after 11 minutes to give the Hatters an unexpected early lead. They hung on to it until 15 minutes into the second half, but then their goal scorer failed in his more familiar defensive role. His poor back pass lets in Kevin Gallagher, and keeper Alec Chamberlain brings him down for a penalty. Chamberlain certainly lets Roger know who he thought was to blame, but he also wasn't impressed with Gallagher's theatrical tumble, and was booked by referee Peter Jones for protesting. His evening continued to go rapidly downhill when Brian Burrow's penalty hit the post and spun in off the back of his head. It was Burrow's fifth successful spot kick of the year, but credit the unfortunate Chamberlain with an unwilling assist. Burrow's happy to accept the referee's ruling that the ball had crossed the line. Terry Butcher found Andy Pearce at non-league Hales Owen. And with just eight minutes to go in his second game for the club, his header secures three invaluable points for the Sky Blues. Another relegation battle for Coventry, this time at Loftus Road. But QPR grabbed the points and are now unbeaten in six games following this downward header from the revitalised Les Ferdinand. Inconsistency is still the main problem and the win-one, lose-one scenario continues. Only Derby and Sunderland's poor form sustaining the hopes of the clubs above them. As transfer deadline day approached, Terry Butcher brought two new faces to Highfield Road. Kenny Sansom, England's most capped left back and still only 32, linked up with his former international colleague for £87,500. And that tall striker Robert Rosario moved from Norwich City for £600,000 to join up with his old teammate at Carrow Road, Kevin Drinkle. Rosario, though, would have to wait for his debut. Stuart Robson had come on loan from West Ham United. Robson, along with Sansom, were in the team for the home league match against Manchester City. Terry Butcher signing autographs at Highfield Road before Coventry's game against Manchester City. He made a more important signing in midweek. Kenny Sanson making his debut after his transfer from QPR. Good start for Sanson. His long ball sets up Coventry's opening goal. Kevin Gallagher's cross. Cyril Regis, a free header. And Regis now sets Mickey Jin off on a 40-yard run. Jin goes all the way and slips the ball past Tony Coton. 2-0 to Coventry, 26 minutes gone. City pull one back, a minute into the second half. Niall Quinn's flick and Clive Allen in for a simple goal. Coventry needing a win and they make absolutely sure of all three points midway through the second half. Brian Borrows well forward, half stopped by Coton. Gallagher forces it in. financial problems are still unresolved Terry Venables insists his consortium still in the frame for a takeover and hope to clinch the deal this week on the field Spurs without two star prize assets Gascoigne and Lineker Coventry take full advantage they go two up in 19 minutes that's David Smith's first of the season and Coventry City really dominate the match early on Tottenham all over the place particularly in defence Cyril Regis with an excellent header off the post. Coventry's second has to come though. And indeed it does. And the scorer is Kevin Gallagher. Again, poor defending. And Gallagher takes full advantage. Good finish from the Scott. So Coventry looking set for only their second away win of the season. But two minutes before half-time and against the run of play, Spurs are back in it. 
And a good finish too from the Spaniard, Nahim. Two one at half time. And the Spurs boss Terry Venables clearly has words with his side and they raise the pace and quality of their game in the second half. Walsh doing exceptionally well here. And when he floats the ball in, Nahim is there for his second and the Spurs equaliser. Spurs two, Coventry two. At Highfield Road, Chelsea are looking to get back to winning ways again after three successive defeats. The match played in a very difficult wind and Coventry get the only goal of the game on the hour. Mickey Jin picks the ball up on the halfway line and goes all the way. His eighth of the season, valuable points for Terry Butcher's side. And they're out of the relegation zone, uncomfortable in mid-table. Coventry, the visitors against Norwich at Carrow Road, and the Midland side go ahead after 29 minutes. Good work from Mickey Jin. Kevin Gallagher's header from close range, the Sky Blues in front. Five minutes before the break, Norwich's equaliser. Cross from Culverhouse and Tim Sherwood's header beats Agrizovic. Sherwood, the top scorer for Norwich, with just seven goals. Norwich take the lead on 48 minutes. Good work from Lee Power back in the home side. Robert Fleck, 2-1 to Norwich. Coventry thought that was offside. And on the hour... Coventry get their point. There's some good work there from Rosario, the man they bought from Norwich. Mickey Jin beats Gunn. To all the result. <laughs> Liverpool were unable to close the gap at Anfield against Coventry on the same night, although they went ahead on 18 minutes. John Barnes missing out Peter Beardsley, but Rush as lethal as ever in the area. Coventry get the equaliser they deserve after 34 minutes. Mickey Jin's pass. Regis clear on Liverpool's goal. Hooper blocks the shot, but Mickey Jin pokes it home from close range. And Liverpool miss the chance to close the gap on Arsenal. Contrasting fortunes for two old England players at Highfield Road. Terry Butcher's Coventry side go ahead against Peter Shilton's derby. Kevin Gallagher springs the offside trap. He lobs Shilton. 53 minutes gone. Six minutes later, more problems for the derby keeper as the Sky Blues make it 2-0. Brian Borrows with an excellent run and Gallagher hits his second of the day. Quite a game this one for Kevin Gallagher. Now he shows he can lay them on as well as score them. Ray Woods gets the third for the Sky Blues. Derby look doomed. Coventry are in the top ten. It's now six games without defeat. Three wins and three draws, including that excellent point gained at Liverpool. Up to ninth in the table with three games remaining. The first of those came the following week at Southampton. Good day for Southampton's Rodney Wallace down at the Dell. The wingers two goals in just four minutes give the South Coast club all three points against Coventry. Cockrell's pass and Wallace is in for the first. Southampton one up, 27 minutes played. On 31 minutes, it's two. A run from Matthew Letissier at the Coventry defence. Agrizovic can only parry the shot and it falls perfectly for Wallace. Number 18 of the season for him. In the second half, Coventry get one back on 73 minutes. Kenny Sanson's cross, Cyril Regis knocks it back and Mickey Jin finishes it off. His 11th of the season, but Coventry's six-match unbeaten run comes to an end. The penultimate league fixture against Sheffield United ended in a goalless draw. A disappointment for the supporters in the last home game. The final match away at the newly crowned champions, Arsenal. At Highbury, the champions Arsenal round off their season in great style. They go on a scoring spree against Terry Butcher's Coventry. The first, though, courtesy of an own goal, run from Paul Merson and the deflection into his own net by the unfortunate Trevor Peake.
Arsenal make it two on the half hour and once again they've got some over generous Coventry defending to thank this time it's Andy Pierce's header intended for his keeper there the Swedish international Anders Limpar gets there first Coventry get back into it before half time through the Scott Kevin Gallagher after a scramble just the 18th goal Arsenal have conceded all season there won't be any more because George Graham's sides keep their best to last. They put four goals past Coventry in the last 13 minutes. 77 minutes gone now. And David Hillier, who's come in so well into the Arsenal side, picks up Alan Smith. Arsenal's third. And Alan Smith's 27th of the season. The Gunners really finishing with a great flourish. Just a couple of minutes later, Limpar's turn once again. Good work from Campbell. And the Swede gets his second of the day. 4-1, Arsenal. And they're not finished yet. Just four minutes to go, and Anders Limpar's hat-trick, and number five for the champions. Long ball from Lee Dixon. Limpar is through, and round of Grzovic he goes for a stylish finish. What a great way to round off his first season in the Barclays League. If Coventry thought their agony was over, they were wrong. Arsenal hit them for six. Fullback Nigel Winterburn sets up Perry Groves. The champions celebrate in style. A 6-1 defeat in the last game for the second season in a row, a final placing of 16. The best cup run in the Rumbelows competition going out in the fifth round to the eventual winners, Sheffield Wednesday. The biggest event of the season, the arrival of Terry Butcher. Well, I think uh, when you come into a, uh, a setup like this, um, I've been told many, many things by the first division manager since then, but um, first impressions are, are quite uh, the best ones that you can make. And uh, I came here, I, I judged it to be a very good squad, um, some good young players here. Um, it was a very, uh, it was a club that was quite happy to be um, mid table ish. And, uh, um, I think you know everybody was quite happy with the job here, coming into work and everything else. Um, when I first started, we lost to Liverpool. We didn't have a first division win until Boxing Day, so we needed to get points in the bag. We needed to be probably more ruthless. Um, I made one or two changes within the squad, um, but basically we had a very good core, a very good nucleus of players um, who liked to play their football, um, who liked to enjoy training, were very punctual, um, enjoyed working here because it is a great facility. Um, a very good squad of players very happy uh, bunch of players as well so um, it wasn't didn't take much effort really to try and turn them around to play or to continue playing their football but also to uh, to try and pick up points and be possibly be, be more ruthless when it came to winning games and when you arrived there were a certain amount of players who were very very established and senior players here who were looking towards the twilight of their careers tell me about the decisions behind uh, some of the moves and statements that have been made well, um, we sold David Speedy. David Speedy made his intentions clear that he didn't want to stay at the club, so fair enough. David moved on. Uh, David was a quality player. He, he scored vital goals for us. But he felt his football lied elsewhere, so fair enough. You know, David David uh, moved on to Liverpool. Um, we have a, a few players here um, who are uh, over 30, um, senior players, um, but still very good first division players. I mean, people like uh, um, Trevor Peake, who's 34, um, playing as well as ever, in my opinion. Um, he's got another two years of his contract left, and looks so like he's going to um, see that out and possibly, you know, go on even longer. Do do a Billy Bonds. So uh, um, Trevor was uh, leading by example on the pitch. Steve Grzovic in goal has just signed a new three-year contract. Uh, Steve's a very, very good first division keeper, bags of experience. He's a big lad, dominates his area, dominates everybody because he's he's six foot four. But uh, you know, it's just people like uh, Steve and Trevor, um, quite a few players uh, around about the 30 mark as well. But still very good first division players. Um, mainly at the back is where we've got uh, the older players, the, those senior players. But that's, that's where you want the experience, that's where you want uh, uh, mature senior players there to, uh, to help the, the younger players in front of them. So um, the players here, you wouldn't actually, I mean, the games that we've played um, towards the latter. Uh, half of the season, towards the end of the season, you, you know, you'd, you'd never think that these players were in the twilight of their career, as you say. So um, they're passing on their experience to the younger players, and you know it's a it's a good system. 
What can you say about looking forward to next year? What are the ambitions for Coventry City? Well, the, I think the ambitions are to build on uh, probably the mistakes that we've made this year. And I, I say mistakes, I mean, we've been too inconsistent. One week we've looked a very good side and the week after we've looked, you know, very mediocre. Uh, we've got to look to build a little bit of consistency into our play. Hopefully we'll score more goals. Uh, we've got a better balanced side now. Uh, but the biggest, most important thing really is to make sure that players are fit and, uh, you know, are not on the treatment table because that does, you know, carve a big dent into clubs of country size. How have the fans been? Fans have been brilliant, absolutely first class. Really have. Um, it's been a few boos and jeers every now and then because, you know, the fans desperately feel for their club and our performances at home, at home especially, sometimes, uh, first half uh, in, many, in many games, um, hasn't been what they wanted and they've obviously let their feelings be known but uh, generally they've been excellent and uh, our second half displays have, uh, have, uh, have cheered them up and uh, our away support has been good, um, away from home they've been very good, they've come, they've come away and uh, supported us very well but they're, they're, I think they're pleased with our quality of football and the way that we want to play our football and uh, um, you know if they can support us as they have done this season, if they support us next season equally then we'll all be very pleased. How would you sum up the season? Sum up the season? It has been disappointing. It's been a season of changes. It's been a transitional period, really, in the club. Um, hopefully now, having got into the first division again for, for the 25th time um, in a row, it, it would be nice if we could um, do well next season and uh, obviously get to, to mid-table and plus. So it's a season. Um, it's been disappointing. It was a good start to the season, I think. Obviously, when I came, uh, the change around everything else, our form dipped, our points dipped. We, we did dip low in the, into the uh, uh, relegation zone, but then picked up well, so it finished on a good note. So, if you're looking at a, a headmaster's report, probably about, probably about a B. <laughs> what's, your, what's your thoughts on uh, possibly playing for place in Europe next year? Well, it's. It would possibly be a dream for Coventry. Um, the club has ambition. The club obviously wants to be in Europe, but um, to do that, we've got to start off well next year and build on there. Um, this club uh, can't go out and buy a million pound players. It can't really compete with the likes of Manchester United and Leeds when it comes to uh, paying salaries. When it comes to to buying, you know, these these in, uh, international players. So we have to make do with youngsters coming through, with players like you know, like Ray Woods, who, who are still very very good players. But he was a snip at two hundred thousand. You know, put players like this. So, you know, given a given a good run, given a good run free from injuries because we had a few injuries last year, I'm sure that we can do well. If it if it comes to a place in Europe, every, obviously everybody here will be so delighted. But you know, we're looking not to get into a relegation fight next year, but to to look for a mid-table position and hopefully challenge in the top half. It's been a period of change at Highfield Road, but plenty of hope for the future and memories of some wonderful goals during the 1990-1991 season for Coventry City.